Hi, welcome back to Manohar Academy. In this lesson, we are going to do a recap of what we have already known, what we have already learned about packages. And we are going to see one more concept like when we are including a class in package, we need to take care of the folder structure as well. I mean, the, the folder in which we are going to keep that class. Okay, that we are going to see. So let's do a re quick recap. So in the previous lesson, we have seen what is package. That is, package is nothing but collection of classes that work together and they are kept in the same folder. So we do that so that we can provide a very qual very unique qualified name for that class. So there won't be any name clash when we are integrating the code from third party vendors as well as multiple developers. So that is one advantage of the package. Also we know that the package names, they generally start with reverse do domain names. In this example, my domain or my website is manoharacademy.com. So I started with reverse domain name that we already know. And other advantages of packages are they provide a better way of organizing your work and they will provide you the ability to hide some classes and expose some. We are going to see that not in this class, but in the next class. I will talk about package scope in the next class. So that is when we cover. Now, I mentioned about two packages in the previous lesson that is java.util, java.util function. These are called hierarchical packages because the way they are organized, because of this nature, they are hierarchical and they are called hierarchical packages. But they have nothing in common for the compiler. As far as compiler is concerned, whether they have these names or these names like java.util, java.function, it doesn't matter for the compiler because in compiler's perspective, they have nothing in common. They are completely different classes. But there are many hierarchical classes in the hierarchical classes, in hierarchical packages in the Java API. For example, if you see here, you can see there are many packages. They all start with java.util because they're all providing some utilities, right? So utilities, that is the reason they are kept inside that package. How did I get java.util.function? And I did miss here. So that's okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I took all these package names from the SC7. I believe so. And java.util.function is included in Java 8. Okay. Uh, the main point to remember is here they have nothing in common. It is very important. They have nothing in common for the compiler. Even though they are hierarchical, they have nothing in common. Please remember that. And importing classes. We have already seen that we can import one class at a time or we can import all the classes from a package at a time. Also, we can import one static member that can be field or a method at a time, or we can import all the static members from a class at a time. So here we are not, whenever we are talking about static, here you can see that we are not talking about importing classes, but importing static, static members from the class. But when we are talking about regular import, we are talking about importing classes. Okay, that is the difference, importing classes and importing members. We can write our code without imports also that we have seen that, right? Like every time I want to use a local date, I have to write like java.time.localdate. That is okay, but that is very verbose and tedious and that is not productive at all. You will be spending all your time in typing those package names. So we don't prefer that, but it is important to know that you can write that way, but you will never do that. Also, in the previous slide, we have seen about hierarchical packages. You can never import those class, classes from those hierarchical packages in a single import. For example, you may be thinking that inside java.util, we have more packages. All those packages can be represented by star. From those packages, all the classes can be represented by one more star. That is not true. This is an invalid import. Okay, you can't, you can't import all the classes from all these packages at a single time. Just because they look like hierarchical, it doesn't mean you can do that. So it is invalid. Uh, this statement is wrong. So please ignore this particular point. This is wrong. Uh, so if I don't have this particular dot, dot star, if I have only java.util.star, 
then it will import only classes from java.util package it won't import other packages from that java.util okay and it is always a very good idea to import only what is needed i mean don't import all the classes from a package but rather import only the required classes from the package you can do that easily with the ide right i mean whenever you are typing a class name if the class name is not already there the ide is going to write the import for you for that only single class so you never need to use this particular feature like uh, importing all the classes from a package for the compiler there is no difference i am repeating again for the compiler there is no difference whether uh, you import one class at a time or all the classes or one static member at a time or all the static members for compiler it is same but for humans i mean the code is for humans to read and humans to understand so if you import only the classes that you need by looking at the imports i can tell what are the all the classes that are used in this particular source code if you <laughs> import all the classes by using this uh, particular dot star notation then i don't know what classes you are using and in packages there will be generally 20 to 30 classes uh, how can i know out of those 20 30 classes which classes you are using so this is a very good idea and good practice to import only the required classes also it is more maintainable for example let me go to next slide so we have these two classes okay we have a date class in java.util as well as java.sql.date uh, in this slide i will explain you why this is a good idea to import only what is needed okay uh, so uh, let me discuss what is there in this slide that is importing classes with same name then i will talk about uh, why it is good idea to import only what is needed okay now i have imported date class from java.util because i need that also i need java.sql.date they have the same name the same simple name but they have different quali fully qualified names so if, now if i write this particular statement for creating the new data object which data object i am talking about am i talking about util.date or am i talking about sql.date this is ambiguous so we have to resolve that ambiguity we can do that in two ways one of these two ways so this is one code fragment and this is another and here i am adding one extra line i am explicitly exporting java.sql.date but uh, i am using package imports for here so if this line is not there so from util date is available from sql package date is available and this statement is confusion confusion i mean it will cause confusion or ambiguity but if i add one if i add only one class explicitly uh, or using the single import so compiler knows that whenever i am saying date i meant only sql.date not util.date so this is one way so what i did i changed the explicit imports one class at a time to uh, generic imports then i explicitly imported one class date class so you can compare these two and you will understand why the ambiguity is resolved okay other way of doing that is okay fine i mean i did not change my import statements i am importing both the classes explicitly but when i am defining i have to use java.sql.date because i that is what i want so there is no other way uh, so one of these approaches if you prefer this way go ahead with this way that is fine you have to use only when you are defining the objects when you are creating the object so that is fine or this one is also fine okay now let's say we are talking about this particular code and we don't have this statement at all and initially so i'm i'm repeating again because there is small uh, or i can create a new slide okay let me explain you first let's say i don't have this statement also the date class is available only in the util dot it will package not in sql package and i have these two imports i'm using other classes from sql package so i have to use these two statements so they are there and this one is there because the date is not available from the sql package it is available only from the util package there is no ambiguity here fine after few days 
API people, Java API developers, they added the date class in SQL package also. So now it is going to become ambiguous. Previously it is not ambiguous because the date class is available in only one package. But now it is ambiguous if I try to recompile because the same class is available from other one even though I did not meant it, I actually imported that one as well because I am doing a generic import here. That is, that is not what we want and we don't want to get our code impacted just because someone added some class in a package. So that is the reason it is a very good idea to import only what is needed so that in the future you won't get these compilation errors when you are trying to recompile whenever someone added the same class name in a different package which you imported using a generic import. Okay. Now there are some more rules. Okay. These rules I have discussed in the previous lesson also. Package declaration should be the first line in the source file. You can't include it anywhere else. It should be the, if at all it is present, it should be the first line. Then it should be followed by import statements that should be followed by the class definitions. So this is okay. And if we don't have this package declaration, then the class will become, uh, the class will belong to a default package. Okay. So this is very important. Okay. There is a package called default package and uh, the name of the default package is, I don't know, maybe default, but if you don't include this package declaration, then the class will belong to the default package. That is all there to know about default package. <laughs> so all the classes that doesn't have any declaration, package declaration, they all will belong to this particular default package. And if you are including package name or package declaration, it should be the first line in the source code. Okay. Having said that now, because I wrote or because I included the student class in a package, so and so package, I have to make sure this particular student class is in student.java file. That is right, right? I mean, we the class name should match the file name. So if it, because it is student, the class, the file name should be student.java. That we already know, that we know from the first lesson when we were writing hello world program. But the other thing to know is because we are including this class in this particular package, we have to include this particular file in a particular folder. The folder structure, it should be like this. com slash subfolder Manohar Academy, subfolder Core Java, subfolder Entities. And this can be in the our project directory or wherever we are including our code. So this is how we have to maintain our files. Okay, whenever we are including some class in a package, we have to make sure the file is present in the correct directory or correct folder. Otherwise, you, you will not be able to compile, you will not be able to run. We are going to see that in this class. Okay. And also, wherever this particular folder is there, for example, it may be on your desktop, it may be on somewhere else. So that particular directory should be on the class path. What is class path? We will discuss later. But I, I will show you or it should be on the class path or you can go to that particular directory that is project directory and you can compile. So that is what I'm going to show you in this lesson, how to compile a class that is already included in your package. So I'm going to go to the directory, then I'm going to compile. So here you can see that we are compiling a source file. So source file will end with .java extension and we are compiling that particular source file. Then we are running the class. So these same commands, Java C, Java commands. So, but when we are giving the class name, we should give the fully qualified name. Till now, in couple of lessons, whenever we compiled on the command line, we are actually giving the class name because that class name is in the default package. So we don't need to give the fully qualified name or we are giving the fully qualified name and fully qualified name is same as simple name because that is in the default package. But because now we included it in a different package, we have to give the complete name. Also, the other thing you need to remember is whenever we are giving the file name, obviously that is in a folder and we are giving the folder, folder, complete folder path, complete file path. But whenever we are running, we have to give the class name. Class name doesn't have those slashes. Okay. Class name has only dots. 
because package name if you see here that has dots not slashes okay let's see this one okay uh, we we are going to create a class and we are going to include that in a package then we are going to compile that so that is what we are going to see okay here i am going to create a directory so this is going to be my project directory so here i am going to create a class later i will move that okay let me save it okay package com dot monohar academy dot core java dot module 2 so module 2 is <laughs> not a good name but that's okay uh, I'm going to create a class called hello world oh sorry it should be student only And I'm going to include the static void method. Okay, let me print hello world. That is the simplest thing to do, right? <laughs> Okay, I have this class. So now what I told because this package name is so and so I have to include that in a subfolder. So let me create that sub the folder structure first. So I have to create a folder called com I have to create new folder Manohar Academy I have to create one more folder called core java inside that I have to create a folder called module 2 so I have to keep my class inside this one right so I am removing this text document I am moving the student class to that particular directory so if you see here it is com com manohar academy Manohar Academy, Core Java, Core Java, Module 2, Module 2. So the package name, the parts in the package name will be separated by dots, but the folder structure will be obviously the folder structure. Okay, so now let's compile it. So I'm going to go to this particular directory. So now here I have that whole path. Now I am going to use Java C com one over academy core java module 2 what is the class name student dot java okay it compiled fine now in order to run that I accidentally closed that file so it, the compilation went file and it created the class file or byte file so now I am going to byte code I am going to execute Java package name dot class name so that is a fully qualified name so let me execute that and we saw the output so now let me keep that in a different folder okay and we will try to run that so instead of keeping it in the correct package let me move this one to module 2 it's <clears throat> yeah inside core java so now there is no module 2 and the class is available in this particular one so i have to close this okay now the class is in a wrong folder it is not in the correct folder it is in wrong folder now let's try to compile it and run it so here the file is there student.java you can verify that here 
so it is in particular core java folder not in module 2 folder okay it should compile fine okay it compiled fine and you can see that the class file is created so even though i kept it in the wrong folder there is no compilation error uh, compilation error so it compiled fine but if i try to run this one i won't have any success so now i need to remove this particular so that is where the file is there right this is the class name so the class file is available in this particular package core java package so i need if i try to run that so i got a compilation error class not found so let me try the other one so if i try previous one that is actually the fully qualified name the file itself is not there right so in i couldn't run the dot class file or the by giving the class dot class file name path or i can't run even by the giving the fully qualified name so i am able to compile but i can never run that so make sure just because it compiled okay that doesn't mean it is going to run even though it compiled it is going to get i mean it, it is not getting to get loaded and you are going to get a class not found exception that is nothing but i am not able to find the class that you are talking about because the reason is this you you said you are going to keep the package in so and so folder by giving this package name but you kept it in the wrong folder you compiled compiler is okay with that but the uh, interpreter is not okay with that so that is the main uh, main uh, topic that we are covering in this class so we learned two things in this particular class even though we spent this much time but i believe the time is well spent because this is a very important concept and we covered we did a recap of everything we did in the previous lesson so that's good okay we whenever we are including a class inside a package we need to make sure it is in the proper folder even though it compiles even if it is in the wrong folder it is never going to run so make sure you include it in the same correct package you run it properly so next lesson we will talk about class path and package access we are going to talk about two things maybe in the single class or maybe in two class last but not least if you haven't subscribed already please go ahead and subscribe if you are benefited from this video please like it and share it with your friends when you share with your friends your friends can also watch they can also learn that way you are helping your friends that is all from this lesson see you in the next lesson thank you